Hello again, I am Blunty, and this, well, this is the ROG Zephyrus M16 from Asus, which was sent in by Intel so I could take a sponsored look at the beating heart of this monster. Said beating heart at the core of this monster is in fact the 11th gen Intel Core H-Series CPU, which on their product page they describe as desktop caliber for creation and mobile workstation productivity. That's what I need. On paper, it's perfect for me. Before the global situation happened over the last couple of years, I was already in need of a new laptop for when I travel to expos and conventions and stuff for video production on the road. But because of the global situation, I didn't actually have the need for a powerful mobile video production rig anymore. But things are changing now. We're on the path back to let's be kind and call it normalcy and it's time to think about the future again and this this could be it this notebook has the intel core i9 11900h carved out of intel's 10 nanometer super thin technology eight cores 16 threads and is capable of turbo clocking up to a grin inducing 4.9 gigahertz that's quick for those of you not familiar with the numbers involved in this kind of stuff it's quick it also has Intel's UHD Graphics 4 11th Gen built right in, and why you'd even want that when there's also a full-fat graphics powerhouse in the form of an NVIDIA GTX 3070 on board. Well, I will come back to that, but believe it or not, it is super handy even for the kinds of heavy lifting 4K video editing workflows that I'm talking about. And yes, with an RTX 3070 under the hood, you can bet your bottom button that I will be talking about gaming. But first, let's be responsible and get the work done. For me, that means video editing. I use DaVinci Resolve for editing these days, and it's with no surprise that I discovered that the H-Series i9-11900H has plenty of grunt to shove things around. But it's not just raw processing power that counts with this kind of workload. Connectivity in several different ways is absolutely key to video production on the road. I need the fastest Wi-Fi connectivity I can get so any internet research and asset collection I need is not impeded in any way. But also, of course, when it comes to upload time, getting those big fat video files into YouTube in the first place. I don't want to be sitting around for ages waiting for that to happen. That's very frustrating. For that, we have Intel's latest killer Wi-Fi tech in the form of the exquisitely zippy Wi-Fi 6802.11ax, which is dual band for maximum connectivity wherever I find myself, whatever network I find myself with access to, this will keep me nice and happy. But it's not just about the pure speed either, it's also about the massively reduced latency involved, which is less important for video uploads, but very important for gaming. In fact, it's up to 75% lower latency. That's a big difference, especially for gaming. But before video upload time, and indeed before gaming, there's the matter of actually moving around big fat 4K video files and getting them on the machine to edit them in the first place. And for that, we have the likes of Thunderbolt 4, which is capable of shoving data around at up to 40 gigabits per second. Which, if I also team it with a simple dock, this is this is a fancy dock, but even a simple dock means I can run extra display ports as well as extra connectivity, as well as whatever else the port happens to have on it. Thunderbolt 4 is excellent for that kind of stuff. And being able to run things like extra screens is really useful because I, when I'm at home, I do use a double monitor setup for when I'm working. It's incredibly nice for workflow and productivity and things like that. And while the laptop does have a HDMI port on it, of course, it's also nice to have that Thunderbolt 4 for monitors that can use that directly or indeed using it with a dock. So we have DisplayPort output. Or indeed the USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is also on board, also supports direct DisplayPort monitors. Included amongst that, of course, are other essentials. This model includes a micro SD reader, not so useful for the standard SD cards my main camera uses, but for the action camera and handheld gimbal cameras I tend to use as secondary support cameras while on the road, it is perfect. And of course, like I said, HDMI 2.0B, a USB 3.2 Gen 2, USB 3.2 Gen 1, and USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C are all essential for portable drives, camera connectivity, card readers, and even has a LAN port there. And I know what you're thinking, not Wi-Fi, that's kind of old school. What 
possible usefulness could that be? But I have been caught out by this before. Because even today, not every hotel has in-room Wi-Fi, so sometimes you do have to resort to the Ethernet connection. Or indeed, if you're in the business center of, of, a, of a hotel, usually they'll have uh, Ethernet connections for you as well. You never know. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, because I have been caught out about by that before when using a laptop that, you know, was from a manufacturer who decided that Ethernet ports are, are not useful anymore. They're wrong! And if through some of these shots you've been thinking, that screen looks pretty big for a 15-inch laptop, it's because it is. It's a 16-inch screen on a 15-inch laptop. They've shrunk the bezel down, including the chin bar. So they've got just enough extra screen real estate to put a 16-inch screen where a 15-inch screen, you know, in the size of a laptop that would normally have a 15-inch screen. Doesn't sound like much, but it's a big difference when you're just looking at it. That extra screen real estate is really nice, especially when you're editing video, especially when you're editing photos. And of course, it's still nice for gaming as well. It's a 16 by 10 WQXGA. That's a 1600p anti-glare display in here. PAL tone validated so I can trust the colors as I fine tune my videos and photos, etc. And once more, as we edge ever closer to being done with work and on to game time, it is a 165 hertz refresh display, which is beautiful for gaming. So roll all of that up in a unit like this, nice and slim and light and easy to carry around and easy to work with, a nice big touch panel, lovely keyboard. It's easily the best experience I've had working with high bitrate 4K video editing in a portable device. In fact, it's a bit smoother than my big boy desktop, although that beast is held back a bit because I'm still using massive mechanical slow hard drives for mass storage of video files there because of the sheer volume of work I do there. While I'm on the road, I don't need that volume so we can get away with a smaller but much faster M.2 SSD. It has two terabytes of M.2 NVMe PCIe 4.0 SSD built right in. And believe you me, that does make a significant noticeable and big difference when it comes to video editing, especially when you're talking about 4K stuff or high bitrate game captures or anything. That plus the USB 3.2 Gen 2 connectivity for the super fast M.2 external drives that I also use while video editing on the road for mass storage and backups and all that kind of stuff. And of course, there's the very important factor of battery life. As you'd expect for powerful CPU technology made for portable devices, its power management efficiency is good. But frankly, I didn't expect it to be anywhere near as good as it actually is. The last time I used an Intel Core i9 on a laptop, it was one of those big chunky desktop replacement gaming focused beasts. And quite frankly, the battery was more of a convenience thing for being able to move the device from room to room. Uh, but forget any kind of practical sense of being able to use the battery to use the laptop while well, not plugged in because it just it wasn't meant for that. This is. This very video you're watching from ingest to export was edited on this in battery mode without plugging in at once. And here's one of the tricks to that, aside from the power efficiency Intel have designed into the CPU itself, this is where the integrated GPU comes back into play versus the RTX 3070, because of course the RTX 3070, very power thirsty beast. And if you're not running games, you don't necessarily need it. But more specifically to the workload I'm talking about when video editing, when it comes to export time, I tend to use Nvidia's onboard video encoder technology that's on their graphics cards. It's fast, it's efficient, and it creates a really good end result. But like we said, the RTX 3070 is rather power hungry. The good news is Intel's integrated GPU also has a video encoder all of its own. They call it Intel Quick Sync. And it means while portable, I can turn off the power thirsty RTX 3070, let Intel's graphics drive that display and still have access to extremely efficient video encoding. CPU encoding versus encoding with a dedicated video encoder is <laughs> universes apart when we're talking about efficiency of time, of effort, and of power usage. As a demonstration towards that, here's a side-by-side -side of NVIDIA's encoder and Intel's encoder crunching down on the exact same project. In fact, this very video you're watching. And the especially nice thing is that where once it was a bit of a fiddly mess to do it, Asus have actually made it crazy easy to do. They even have a dedicated hardware button to bring up what they very gamerly call their Armory Crate software, where amongst other handy adjustments you can quickly access, you can very quickly swap between the two GPUs on the fly. But of course, now that we're up to the bit where we encode the video, work time is done, game time can begin. Cranking some AAA titles to the 1600p display with high settings and nice frame rates, 
it's not something I'm concerned about. With an i9 and a 3070, you can sort of take for granted that it's going to be a very good gaming machine, can't you? So I'm going to push that a little bit, see where the limits are. So I very deliberately chose a couple of brand new games that are known to be a bit chonky to run, bit, bit, of, bit of a pig to run, a bit notorious for being power thirsty. We'll start with New World, one of, if not the most graphically and performance hungry MMOs we have ever seen. And on the M16, it runs literally every bit as well as it does on my dedicated desktop gaming rig, which also happens to run an RTX 3070 and a 12 core 24 thread flagship CPU launched 18 months ago. And although this particular game isn't as data thirsty as some, it is an MMO, so with Intel's built-in Wi-Fi 6, I finally feel confident in gaming over Wi-Fi. And yes, some of you, essentially console gamers, might claim you've been gaming over Wi-Fi for ages, but there's a reason my gaming PC and all my consoles are hooked up to Ethernet. Speed, reliability, and lowest latency. But now, yeah, I'm not even worried. Like we talked about before, Wi-Fi 6 is epic. Now then, we do of course have an RTX 3070 in here, which means we have ray tracing core. So obviously, I want to test ray tracing on this slim little gaming rig. I mean, work rig. It's a very, very serious business. <clears throat> for that, I chose Far Cry 6. And although its use of ray tracing for lighting and shadows is relatively subtle compared to how some games use it, there's another reason I chose this game. It, whether or not you have ray tracing on or off, uh, like the previous entries in the series, runs on a game engine that's pretty heavily reliant on single core CPU performance, an area where Intel are consistently strong and have been for, well, ever basically. And once more, I'm actually matching the kinds of performance numbers I see from my full on, built for purpose, desktop gaming rig. Again, whether or not I have ray tracing on or off, I'm seeing pretty much exactly the same kinds of performance numbers. So, yeah. While we're no strangers to gaming laptops that claim desktop-like performance, it wasn't really until the 11th gen Intel Core H series here, and indeed the RTX 3000 series, that I've seen it in a rig I would be happy to actually travel with. Before now, when you were talking about a rig that could do proper gaming properly, we are always talking about big, bulky, loud, heavy, battery-compromised rigs. Solved. Now it's all nailed down, squished within and slimlined within a device that does cover all my bases when it comes to work and play and just whatever else is sitting in between those. I'm seriously impressed and not just in an Intel sponsored this video, so I have to say I'm impressed by it kind of way. I'm impressed in a blunty doesn't BSU kind of way. It is a legitimately perfectly balanced work play device. And cheers to the rest of you out there who have made it to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it interesting, insightful, useful. I am Blunty. Uh, thanks to the patrons floating up above there. I need to get my sign off too soon. Patrons first. Then I say, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time. Oh, and hopefully you've done the thing where you've subbed in bell and commented along the way, because all that's important. I think I forgot to do that earlier in the video. A bit late now.